introduce yesterday, uh, I want to talk about search, the importance of search. And I dare to say that search is not everything, but without search, everything is nothing. And uh, I want to talk about integrating views and not integrating things. This is something that Ben and I were um, addressing yesterday. Uh, we have a wonderful structure on the wiki, and now we crash our brains about how do we access that? What kind of dashboard do we set up? What kind of entry page? What's the main page? And with search, this is all superfluous because there's one single interface to humanity that 99% of the people use, and that's Google for everything. We book flights through the Google search box nowadays. Um, so let's look at the business case. Uh, we want to make hotline history easily available to hotline agents. That is a concrete business case of one of my customers. Uh, and we'll see what the challenges are here. So the use case is that some customer uh, calls the hotline or uh, contacts it by email, explains problems and quotes an error code, just to keep things simple now. And of course, the hotline agent then answers the questions. And at the end, finally, we want to expose a search interface to our knowledge base so that the um, customer can search himself. Now, have, let's have a look at the business domain ontology. Um, I mentioned Mermaid yesterday. So that is the online editor for Mermaid. Uh, we won't go into this, but you can really alter what you see here on the right by just um, playing around with what you have on the left. I highly recommend to use this uh, twice a day for whatever you want to do in life. Good. Um, just very briefly, we have uh, topic types as we were seeing yesterday. So let's say our SMW manages FAQs and troubleshooting articles. That is one resource silo. Then we have a ticketing system that of course manages tickets, right? Uh, as OTRS, for example. And we have a code repository that would be GitHub or something like that for a company where the error code information is stored. Uh, with my concrete customer, uh, the solution to error code handling is actually not, not contained in the documentation, but it's within the code as comments. Um, now, the solution to the problem is tied together from several topic types. So you need the ticket and the error code to figure out what the problem is, and you need the FAQ and the troubleshooting article to actually solve the problem. And you can see that these come from different resource silos. Now you are tempted to say, we have to get the error codes and um, the ticket into the wiki. We need to integrate. I don't think that is a particularly good idea because, uh, again, uh, let me just briefly say where we are now. So we're looking at this search part. Yesterday we are talking about how knowledge workers would expose their knowledge in articles. So now we are talking about um, the search. Just very briefly, what is search supposed to do? Uh, a refresher. Uh, we have a topic article in our semantic media wiki that, for example, would solve easy system cloning, which is in English. And we have a search request, which is Datensicherung, which is a German expression for actually saving data. And of course, system cloning would be one of those, um, one solution to that. So what a search engine then does is to take the features of our article, that is the solution to the problem, and matches it to the search signals. And of course, Datensicherung has by string nothing to do with system cloning. However, they both address the same thing. So what you want actually the search engine to do is give me system backup P stuff. Okay? That doesn't mean that necessarily 
uh, articles that are providing a solution to that problem contain the word backup and system. They can be about something else in a different language, but you want to, um, you want to make, it, uh, make them find it. So at the end, a search engine, or actually Elasticsearch, which is an uh, information retrieval system, is spectacularly simple. It just matches ASCII code strings. And if you write system in capital letters on the search query part, it won't match it to a feature which is system in small letters. So the way to do this between is uh, with match concepts. You have to uh, take into account that things might be in multi-language. Then you have a lot of antonyms, synonyms, hyponyms, and hyponyms. You have, for example, previous searches that you can tie in. So we're not talking about the signals. Um, and you have explicit um, features of a topic or synthetic. We were talking about that yesterday, and you will see what I mean by that right away. Now, what's the problem with the resource silos now? And you can see my talk was named Enterprise Knowledge Management Including SMW. It's not with SMW. Uh, two years ago, SMW was me up front and center. Now it's moved to the bottom right, and search has moved up front and center. Why? Because now we're facing this. That is a typical customer setup that you will encounter. Now this is Sabine's website, I just use that as an example. Let's say her company runs a website, it runs file system, systems, it runs um, email accounts, it has a wiki, and it's got code repositories. Now you want to make sure that the search engine covers all of that. Because if you, we introduce the semantic media wiki and we say we've got a silo search again, you won't make a lot of friends. So the challenge now is, of course, to mold all these resource silos into one single index mapping um, design. And these are the classes. Now, my terminology is that I call this a, actually, that's an old graph. This should be resource silo. So these are resource silos. What we want to end up with is with entities. An entity is a piece of knowledge, a piece of information that is to EPO style. It is useful in itself. And you will know about entity relationship diagrams. So knowledge uh, semantically can be organized in entities and their relationships. So we're talking about subjects or topics and the properties. Now, what's important, we have one step between the resource silo and the entity, and that's the resource. Why? Because in most cases, a semantic media wiki page represents one entity, as we saw yesterday. Even my ontology that I recommended yesterday models one page as one entity, but that does need to be. You could say one knowledge entity is a section in a page. So this class, which is a code class, would have to break up each single page into multiple entities. And of course, most of the time, one GitHub repository file would represent one entity. However, email messages, the message itself could be one entity, and each attachment by itself could be other entities. So one email message, which is a resource that's coming out of a Gmail or email account, this is inheritance, um, could contain multiple uh, entities. And of course, for file systems and websites, we use sitemaps that you tie in from wherever you want. And it does a type analysis through Tika, which is Apache Tika. I'm not sure who knows that. Uh, that is able to detect the MIME types of about 2,000 documents and automatically selects the right uh, parser to extract the um, entities from that. 
And then, uh, so I would provide a core functionality that does that, and then you have customized functionality. You'll see what I mean by that later. And then you submit everything to the same index uh, that is then queried by, um, by code that it, you, can, you can deploy. Now we'll see two interface uh, examples, and this is the only code you need to install the interface anywhere you want uh, anything that can handle uh, HTML. Now what we're talking about is, for example, this. I'm sorry, there's a lag. So this is my website. And now, semantically, what you can see, now, there's no design optimization here, OK? But what you can see when I type, it extracts properties and property values. And we're talking about the top 10 property values. And that would also work just to show you. So if you, you can deploy those four HTML lines wherever you want. And it's tied in here. So that is exactly the same interface wherever. Now, this, what, what's nice here is that if the customer tells you, we've got an intranet, we've got an intranet, I don't know, somewhere else, we've got something else, you can you don't have to tell them, well, people have to navigate to that URL to search for things. You just literally um, deploy whatever you have. I mean, you deploy the, the interface to wherever the customer wants it. Uh, and then one thing, this is obviously Google design, because you will make a lot of people very happy if they see Google design. I had people actually asking me, why do you integrate Google search in our website now? And I said, no, it just looks like Google search, but it is not Google search. Then, um, talking about semantics, you would have to, what I want to do now, ex what I want to expose, for example, this is a topic on my um, wiki, which is a recipe easy system cloning. We saw that before. Uh, this is now wh whether all of this is necessary is another question. But this is the topic type, which is redundant with this, but I just install, I mean, use it right now here. And then you've got keywords, and these are extracted annotations. So these are links um, that you can use to, to build facets. And they're, um, this is actually the connector for drill down search. Because now we could say, give me all the recipes that are provisioned with a certain Ansible role. I have no clue yet how we're going to design this. But it's just the, the, the Lego parts are, are set up to, um, to start with that. Now, um, I'd like to have full control over that. And I show you where the bits and pieces go. So when you create a search engine, you need an index mapping. That means you have a semantic media wiki page that has certain metadata. And that needs to be mapped to the index. So of course, we have a first level, which is the resource level. So I want the EPO topic to know where it was coming from. So the resource is of a certain type, SMW page. It has a name, which is the page name. And it has a resource URL um, where it's coming from. So actually, sorry, I forgot to uh, uh, mention one thing. What you see here is one document that covers one entity. So we're talking about this, this, this recipe. Then you go down to the entity level. And you've got the entity type, which is a conference entity name, which happens to be identical with the resource name. But just because of the fact that the SMW page is an entity in this case, that needn't be so. Then you have the title. And here you've got entity type and entity title. Remember yesterday I told you that uh, I had a redundant, unnecessary annotation in my ontology. And I said, I'm doing work for Elasticsearch. You could, of course, 
um, merge these things here, but I like pushing work as far down into code as you can to keep the upper interface um, layers thin and, and performant. Then you've got entity keywords, entity content, which this is obviously what most people would uh, end up looking at. And then highly important now, you've got the entity annotations that we were mentioning yesterday. And as you can see now, there, these annotations, for example, remember included Rotterdam Harbor Tour, they are not a document field because we want to have this flexible that any non pre or, or any property that wasn't declared by some administrator in, in the first place can go in here. So, so your user um, comes up with a, with a new property and it, it can go into the index. So the subject would be either the page name or a sub-object page name in case you're indexing uh, sub-objects. And then you have an annotation predicate URL that would, in the case of Semantic Media Wiki, that would be the property page. But only uh, if you deal with the resource silo uh, Semantic Media Wiki. If you use the file system, that would be probably different because there's, there's no semantic layer inherent to that resource um, silo. Then uh, you have the object URL, you have the HTML tag that is, for example, we had uh, include Rotterdam Harbor Tour, yes. And in order uh, for the display to be very simple, I store the entire HTML tag here so my um, interface code doesn't have to uh, come up with that. And then you have uh, the simple annotation object value. And here you see an example of an Elasticsearch document. And what's important now, so this is an example, which is just an instance of what I explained right now. Um, there. Now, remember we were talking about a semantic media wiki ontology yesterday, which would come up with has entity type, has entity title, and so on. But if you have a different resource silo, of course, that information is not designed like that. So we, when we take, for example, this is an error code page. So this would be a GitHub code file that is um, parsed for error messages. And now you, you have a good example for a fact when a resource, the entire code file, contains multiple entities. Okay, it could deal with hundreds of error messages, so you don't want to index the entire page, but just each error message by itself. And then you artificially set these um, fields of the Elasticsearch document so that the Elasticsearch server does not need to know whether it's dealing with a semantic media wiki page or with any other type of resource um, like emails or GitHub repositories or normal text files. But that um, is just, I try to mention or show you the how we do the annotations for non-semantic media wiki um, content. And this is, again, just to summarize it up, sum it up. Um, the idea is to have this search experience semantically with stuff that is actually, oh, actually here you see it. You see? Oh, no, sorry, this is me. Anyway. Um, across many resource silos that a customer typically 
has in his company and not only Semantic Media Wiki. Sorry, it was a little complex in the end, but um, I hope you understood uh, the message. Thank you. That was, um, was that more or less clear? Uh, sorry. Is it possible or is it required to uh, provide any weighting to the silos? Like, if you want to point uh, a user sorry? toward. It, is there a requirement or an ability to weight silos? Like, if I want to push uh, the answer that people find from a search toward a wiki versus, you know, a com company intranet or internet, is it, you know, if there's still a, a hit for a search, is it possible to get, you know, the highest ranked hit to be from something? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Uh, search relevancy, um, that is one of the, uh, you, well, this now goes into search engine design, but for example, you've got signals here. One signal is the fact that uh, this article is coming from this website. Another one is it has two properties or it has the marketing page properties. So you can say, if I'm looking for uh, business services, then you should boost search results that have a explicit marketing page. But you see, this is it. This, there's faculties at universities that deal with that question. How do you create relevant search? But of course, that, that's at index, um, at search, at query time, you can, uh, you can design the system that certain results get ranked higher. But still, 75% of the performance of a search engine, or even more, is decided at index time. That's why it's a, it's a, it's a give and take there. But this is, this is something you have to figure out with the customer. How do you want, you know, is this ranking Good. That's why you cannot have an IT specialist telling you whether this is a good search approach. You need the domain specialists to tell you that if you look for faceting, is this supposed to be the first page? Or is it, is it somewhere else? And how do you tune this? And a lot of people ask me about machine learning. The pro problem with machine learning is you need a lot of data to be able to apply machine learning. And here we're talking about 600 pages, for example. That's not enough by all means. So let's say that I, I'm in IT law, okay, and I'm searching, and, and does Elasticsearch would it bring up uh, suggestions of other content that might be of interest to you? Yeah, that's life? your role. You know, yeah, Elasticsearch has two boundaries. It requires JSON documents with your content data organized in whatever way you want and it exposes a query interface where you can ask for stuff by providing signals. So you can say I'm looking for uh, legal articles and I'm a female worker and it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm in Houston. And then Elasticsearch just takes these two, th or it takes your query with those signals, matches it against the feature, and come up with that. So, so that is that yeah. is uh, cult, yeah. So it's all pre-coordination. Is that, does that happen in the index? Is that, or in the mapping, or? Well, there are several layers you can put this code, and I'm not that familiar and proficient yet with. Uh, tuning all this up. So what you see here is just the brickwork, the foundation, so that I have my back free now to address all these questions. Because these are actually philosophical questions. They're not necessarily technical questions. A big issue is, for example, when, if I change the content of feature faceting, when is it a new page? When is it a new revision? This is something that uh, Cindy explained to me, the dirty diffs, right? It could be semantically irrelevant diffs, but that the system picks up as something new. 
Again, we could use the spaghetti carbonara example. Is spaghetti carbonara without cheese another menu, a menu different from spaghetti carbonara with cheese? Or is it just the same menu with a different option? Although I, I would say that um, like a lot of our users are expecting them, and I get what you're saying, philosophical, but they want that technical extra layer of, oh, you know, it, you know, it brought up these other documents that I wasn't looking for, but they're very helpful. Yeah, of course. But that is something you have to just code, come up with. So, for example, if someone is looking for faceting, we also want, uh, I don't know, you know, information on metadata. But the, the, the engine itself doesn't know that. It is actually pretty simple-minded. It just matches strings for the time being. Questions? Good. So we keep that. Did you cover search within documents? Yes. Yes. Um, that is. Uh, where is it? You see here, when I. So this class, Semantic Media Wiki, uh, I use API functions that come up with each single page. And then if that page type happens to be file, it calls any class that would deal with that. And of course, you could then add a image processing OCR. So if you have pictures, you could have a face recognition. Um, but th th this, this is the most important layer of the entire system. Because, and then it needs to be extremely flexible so you can add different things here like ERPs, CRMs, whatever, you know, newsletter. I found, at the funny, just one little anecdote, I found a solution to my newsletter problem. Because you know when we subscribe to newsletters, you get 25 newsletters a day, you cannot read that. So what I do is I have now newsletters at datapecs.com, so all the newsletters go in there, and they're indexed uh, into the same um, structure. So if I look for, let's say Elasticsearch had a newsletter yesterday about faceting and three months down the road I'm, I'm looking for that, well this search approach will pick it up. I don't have to go to Gmail and you know, do a in-document search. So this is, this is a surprisingly useful little side effect I discovered in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Well, what you what might be interested in looking into is this. Who has heard about this software? You know it. And it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's got a simple jar file. You fire it up and you can drag anything you have on your computer into that window and it will scrape out any little bit of text there is. And um, for a practical reason, I send everything through TCA now. And here, for example, we have to decide whether we use the wiki text, whether we use the parsed wiki text, or whether we use the entire page, right? And yeah, there's lots of things I could tell you now, and I'm tempted, but I won't. Sorry, you, you meant? So my follow-up question for Tika, you said it scrapes out the text. Uh, what about other formats? Will it do PDF? Will it do drawings? Uh, th th but that's, that's, that's this guy's work, or now it's, uh, it's under, I think it's about 10 years old or so. Because 10 years ago, there were many little, little libraries scattered around the web mm -hmm. for any type of uh, mm -hmm. document. And he just molded everything into. It says right there, PowerPoint, XLS, PDF. Yeah, I mean, you have, do you, can you see the? Oh, OK. 
Right. Formats. Is there anything about format? Oh, it's in the second line. Yeah, so but, but all the types. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this saves you a lot of work. And it's super lightweight. Um, what? Hmm? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Let's let's leave it by that. If someone is interested in more, you can always ask me, and I'm uh, more than happy to explain to you how this is done behind the scenes. And this will be my um, focus for the next certainly 12 months, because this I use it every day. You know, we eat our own dog food, right? I, when I look up stuff that I don't know where I stored it, well, then I use this. Good. Okay, thank you.